All right, so this video is gonna be all about the fundamentals of compression and how compressors work. Um, and the basic idea behind compressors is that they act as a very specialized kind of volume knob. Um, so to dive in and take a look at exactly how they work, uh, let's look at this sound file that I downloaded from Madrond 101. I think it's called The Piano Fell in Love. Um, and if you have not checked out Madron 101's records, I highly recommend you do so. He has a gold mine of awesome stuff on his page. Um, okay, so first things first, let's just go ahead and listen to this end passage to kind of get familiar with it. And what I really want to focus on is right here, this difference between this quiet sound of the piano and accordion sustained and then this loud dynamic sound of the piano hitting its first notes again. So let's listen to just that real quick. All right, so that difference there, that's what we're really looking at. Um, and if we, if we move over here, I, I kind of drew out um, half of the sound wave. We're gonna look at half of the sound wave, so I basically kind of like cut it right through here, and we're looking at this top half, just because it's easier to visualize like that. Um, so let's talk about some terminology here. Um, we want to look at the dynamic range, which is the difference between the ceiling and the noise floor. And what each of those are, the noise floor is basically the quietest sound in the recording. So in today's world of digital technology, basically what that means is if you set up your microphone in a room and just record nothing, that sound is the noise floor. So like if I stop talking, that ambient noise is my noise floor. So anything that's quieter than that in this room is going to get buried and not show up in the recording very well. Anything that surpasses that level is going to show up in the recording. The ceiling, on the other hand, is the loudest sound that can be recorded without going into distortion. And what distortion sounds like, um, I'm gonna warn you, you should probably turn down your speakers, this is gonna get kinda loud, but if I get really close to my microphone and talk like this, that is distortion. It sounds really ugly, and I'm not going to do that again. So, um, yeah, that's the difference. Uh, that is our ceiling and our noise floor, and the dynamic range is the difference between basically the loudest sound and the quietest sound. So if we look at this noise profile of here's our sustained piano and accordion that are kind of a quieter sound compared to where the piano hits again and we get this really percussive kind of sound. Um, and let's look at how a compressor works with these. So if I open up my compressor here and turn it on, the, three, the first three parameters that we're gonna focus on are threshold, ratio, and gain. And, uh, well, the way that each of these work, let's start with the threshold first of all. So notice that the threshold starts at zero, and as I pull it down, it goes into negative numbers. So what's happening there is our, our threshold is starting at the ceiling. That zero is the ceiling. And as I pull the threshold down, it's going to come down uh, in, the, in the noise profile. So like if I, if I play this sound wave again, let's look at our, our input. So these meters are tracking the level of the sound wave that the compressor is going to be acting on. And if you'll notice that the, the levels never reach up to zero, which we can also see in the sound wave here, that it doesn't actually reach the ceiling, which is great. That means that there's no distortion in the recording. So it looks like the peak levels are making it to right about there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, oh, and let's look at the quietest sounds that we have, which are all above the noise floor, but let's look at the quietest sounds in this, in this sound profile. They seem to drop to right about halfway in between these two lines. So we'll say that our effective dynamic range here is between this point here and up, up to where the threshold is currently set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this threshold down to maybe like halfway in between or something like that. And so what that's doing now is I've drawn, I've drawn my threshold to come into the noise profile kind of like this. And all the way across. And so here's my threshold. So there's my threshold set like that. And so the way that the, that the compressor is working is let's look at what is above the threshold and what is below the threshold. So when these sound waves here surpass the threshold, 
that's telling the compressor to turn on. So each of these each of these sound waves is saying turn the compressor on. And remember that the compressor is just a volume knob, so it's saying turn the volume down. But how much do we want to turn the volume down by? Well, that's where the ratio comes in. So the ratio is basically a fraction that we're going to set up. And the fraction is 1 over whatever we set our ratio at. So as I drag this down here, like if I drag it down to 2, that's going to set a 2 in the denominator of our fraction. If I drag it all the way down to 50, now our fraction is 1 50th. And so what that's saying is, like if we have our if we have our compressor set at uh, our ratio set at two at one half, then this sound wave here, for example, it's saying cut that sound wave in half. And in fact, every single sound wave that surpasses the threshold, cut that in half. Um, and this is for an ideal, very fast compressor. And we'll talk about speeds of compressors in a second. Um, but if I have my, my ratio set to 1 50th, then what that's going to say is that each of these sound waves that surpass the threshold, cut them down to 1 50th of their original size. Um, so the ratio tells us how much to turn the volume down by. So I'm going to go ahead and set this at 1 half. And so what that would do to this sound profile is for each one of these sound waves that surpasses the threshold, I'm going to cut them in half. So let's see, this is about half of that one there, and half of this one is about there, and half of there, and that's about halfway, and half, and half. Now notice that these sound waves here don't surpass the threshold, so they're not going to enable the compressor. So now I've got a sound profile that looks like this. Get these out of here. And take that one out, something like this. Let's get that out of there. So now here's my overall sound wave profile. Notice that there is much less difference between the ceiling and the noise floor. So I've, I've compressed my dynamic range. That's why it's called a compressor. Well, what good does this do us? Well, now our, our overall sound profile is much more controlled. There's less difference between the quiet sounds and the loud sounds. It's also opened up a lot of room up here between uh, the peak noise level and, and how loud we can get without going into distortion. So that's where the gain comes in. So the makeup gain, we can start turning this up and it's going to take the entire sound profile and move it all up so that it's all going to be, rather than sitting down here by the noise floor, it's all going to be sitting up here by the ceiling. And so it's going to sound louder to us. Um, which brings me to, it's important for us to understand how we hear sound, how we interpret sound. The way that our ears work, as far as volume goes, is we average the differences. So if we hear, if we hear loud sound and then a quiet sound and a loud sound and a quiet sound, we're going to hear the overall profile is somewhere in the middle. A good example of this is like if you're watching television and you know you're watching the TV show and the volume is fine, but then a commercial comes on and it sounds super loud it's actually not any louder than the show was. It's just that it's so compressed that all of it is living up here right by the ceiling and it sounds a lot louder to us because the average level is a lot louder rather than with the show, you know, maybe there was this much dynamic range so we heard it somewhere in the middle and with the commercial there's very little dynamic range and so we hear it all up at the top. One way you can really tell is that with a voice, um, it doesn't sound like natural speech when a voice is really compressed. Um, with natural speech, our our uh, sibilances, the p, k, t, s, those sounds are much louder than the vowel sounds, the a, u, a, i kind of sounds. And so if a voice is compressed, those sibilances get knocked down and the and the uh, vowels get get boosted up and so it sounds like a really unnatural voice. And that's not to say that you shouldn't use compression on vocals. In fact, you absolutely should use compression on vocals. It's just that it's important to keep in mind the balance between enhancing the audio signal enough for the vocals to cut through the mix without making them sound super unnatural. And the amount of compression that you use is going to be totally dependent on the type of music that you're mixing and the style of the vocalist and the delivery and the phrasing and all these different factors. Um, so a good rule to keep in mind when you're when 
when you're mixing compression or really any effect, um, especially when you're getting used to it, is that you want to find the point where you don't actively hear the effect in the mix, but if you take it out of the mix, it feels like there's something missing. That's a good go-to reference point. Okay, so let's take a listen to how the compressor is affecting this particular sound file. So without the compressor on, it sounds like this. And now let's turn the compressor on. And just to exaggerate things, I'm going to turn this ratio up. So listen to how much quieter it is without the gain now compared to the original sound file. And we can see over here that the first hit is peaking at about negative 6.60 without the compressor. Now with the compressor, it's peaking at negative 12, negative 13. So now what we want to do is let's turn up our gain so that it matches uh, the level without the compressor. Okay, so now that first hit without the compressor hits at negative 6.6. And now with the compressor. So now the overall sound profile is louder, but the loudest sounds in the profile are not going any louder than they used to be, right? They're not going into distortion. So what that's going to do in our mix is it's going to make this particular instrument stand out much louder than it used to be. But one thing we want to keep in mind is that we've squashed our dynamic range with this. So let's listen to without the compressor, when, when Madrand hits those piano notes, they're really effective, right? They're really powerful because there's been this dip in volume and then all of a sudden there's this really loud percussive attack that happens. We can feel it, whereas with this, they're not so much. Everything is louder, and so it kind of takes away from how powerful those hits are. Let's listen to just this section right here, first without the compressor and then with the compressor to listen to the difference. And now here's with the compressor. Sounds really loud and kind of flat. So when we're using a compressor, we want to make sure to keep a good balance between making something prominent in the mix with a compressor and not over compressing it and just totally squashing all of the dynamic range and making it flat. Um, okay, so now that we've talked about the main functionality of them, let's talk about the attack and release. So this is where the speed of the compressor comes in. So the attack part of it is how quickly the compressor is going to react. So like for example, if we go back to the sound profile, this first sound wave that was way above the, thre uh, the threshold, it activated the compressor. And so that's gonna tell the compressor to turn on. The attack is gonna tell the compre compressor how fast to turn on. So right now I have this set at 0.5. And so what that means is that 0.5 milliseconds after this sound wave hits, the compressor is gonna turn that volume down. Whereas if I stretched out here to like 20.7, that's 20.7 milliseconds from the time that this uh, sound wave hits till the time the compressor reacts. So that's a way to get some some punchiness through uh, through the mix. Like we were talking about how the piano hits got kind of squashed. If you set a slower attack time, that initial part of the attack of the sound is going to come through in the mix and then the compressor is going to react to it. But what that's going to do, since the compressor is not acting on that first dynamic sound wave, that is going to come through in the in the overall profile and send things in, into distortion if we're not careful, like this. So you can see that it peaked here in the yellow and it also peaked down here. So we'd have to turn the gain down to compensate for that. 
So now what the release time does is it tells the compressor how long to stay on. So for example, these sound waves originally crossed the threshold and triggered the compressor to stay or to turn on, and then the release is going to tell it how long to stay on. So if we have a really long release time set, it doesn't matter whether these sound waves down here cross the threshold or not these up here triggered it and then that time delay is going to keep it on until there's been enough time that something hasn't crossed the threshold. So that's pretty much the basics of a compressor and how they work. Um, I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions or you need clarification on anything, I'm more than happy to do so. Uh, just drop me a line in the comments and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. All right, thanks so much.